It's now January 19th, 2018, and we're about to start Season 6. What's new this time around? Well, we actually dialed back the race count this time. No all-star race, and only 14 races in the regular season this time around. To make up for this, we added in a new track type, Rallycross. Rallycross was something that I had wanted to experiment with for a very long time, and I finally decided to pull the trigger on it in Season 6. So now, our schedule contained GPs, GKs, ovals, SXs, one motocross, and rallycross tracks. I loved the variety that this offered and the challenge that this presented. It wasn't going to be easy for anyone to balance their performance at all of these track types, and that would hopefully keep things spicy for our racing. Anyways, that's enough of a preamble, let's get into Season 6. So, our first race took place at Dublin, and Real Deal, who was talking a big game about being a championship contender this season, started off strong with a moto win and overall. Slaunch responded with a moto win and overall of his own at Grizzly, and Luke, who took the other moto wins in the first two races, took a third at Houston, but finally scored his first overall. Slaunch and Real Deal had quite the back and forth going on in the beginning. Real Dill taking the fourth round, Slosh taking the fifth at Gridiron, and Real Dill winning the first RX overall at Wallaby Way in round six. After this, Real Dill had a strong seven point lead in the championship, but it was by no means over. Slosh wasn't going to back down. He heated back up the following week at Hollywood, coming up short in the overall but taking a moto win. Then he scored another moto win the next week at Ontario as well. In the ninth round was Salt Lake. Real Deal, historically weak on Supercrosses, put in a lackluster performance here, whereas Slaunch, historically one of our best SX riders, did great and may not have scored a win, but put up two good finishes and had now extended his points lead to 18. Real Deal needed to do something fast, or Slaunch was going to run away with this and try to take his second regular season championship. And Real Deal definitely had quite the response. He put up solid finishes at Genua Trail, where Slaunch faltered, then we went to Barvo, where Real Deal put up his first sweep ever in H5HRL, and Slaunch had a rough night yet again. Somehow, in two rounds, Real Deal had turned that 18-point deficit into his 10-point lead, leaving Barvo. Slunch never really recovered since that Genua trail race, and it was actually Detail, the previous season champion, who had been very quiet so far in Season 6, that heated up in the last few rounds and now started to challenge Slunch for second place in points. Meanwhile, Real Deal had a 14-point lead after the penultimate race at Penitentiary, and it wasn't technically over yet, but it was definitely looking very favorable for him going into our dear old track Mirabilis. It's now April 6th, 2018, and we're lining up at the gate. That's right, gate, not the grid. So there's a bit of a twist here that I may have failed to mention. Remember when I said we were adding in Rallycross this time around? Yeah, well, to spice up the season a bit, we actually decided to take a big risk and convert our beloved Mirabilis into an RX track. This was quite the move, and we had no idea whether this would be a good idea or not. So let's get into the race and find out. The lineup at the gate, Luke, Detail, Vulcan, and Opix in the front, then Camby, Phil, Slaunch, and Ricardo in the second gate, and then Ramda, Elite, Lake, and Shift, and frickin' Jared returning to Mirabilis as well. The gate drops and Slaunch cheeses himself trying to jump the gate, not the start that he was hoping for. Luke and Detail run different lines, but both get out in front early and a big pile up in the back of the pack. Slaunch and Opix get the worst of it. Armada gets a great start and is battling in the top three early on. Detail is close behind Luke and is already thinking about challenging for the lead. Camby is in the top five, trying to fight for fourth. At the end of the lap, Luke and Detail opt for different lines and Detail's works better, making them side by side to the finish, but Detail takes the lead at the end of lap one. Lap two, the Joker lane is now open. Every driver is required to take the Joker once during the race, a staple at our RX races. A massive pack battle is going on towards the back, and Slaunch is at the wrong end of it. He needs to make up these spots for his championship points. Detail takes his Joker, and that's going to give him a huge gap in the lead to work with. Elite and Slaunch take their Jokers as well. Lap 3, Phil struggles with Elite and Slaunch but can't get by. Phil has enough and decides to take his Joker. Luke follows suit. So does Camby, Armada, and Vulcan. Armada makes a bad mistake after it and loses a spot to Vulcan. Lap 4, Luch rants about bad Joker strategy. And I've said this in the past, in general, if you have like somebody right in front of you and they're taking their Joker and you think you're faster, let them. Let them take the Joker, run some clean laps, run like 4 or 5 clean laps, and then come back and pass him when you take your Joker. It's really not that hard, but a lot of these drivers in Rallycross, I don't know, I mean this is the third Rallycross now that we've raced this season, we're going to have raced 4 once we're done with the grand final. I just don't know the rationale. I, we just haven't seen that much Joker strategy out of these drivers. We've seen a lot of instances where like a pack of three will all take the Joker right on each other and that is the dumbest thing you can do. So. And Camby starts to close in on Vulcan. Lap five, field is quite gapped at this point. 
Cambi and Vulcan being the closest battle. Lap 6, Cambi goes for a move on Phil in the downhill chicane and has it until Phil eventually passes him back. Vulcan makes a mistake and loses two spots. Lap 7, Detail and Luke have a massive gap on the rest of the field. Armada has some spins and loses 6 to Slaunch. Lap 8, Cambi and Phil have a close battle for 3rd. Lap 9, there's a great pack of 4, duking it out for 3rd through 6th. Cambi is pressuring Phil hard for 3rd. Opix comes out of the Joker to get Goomba'd by Slaunch. Lap 10, Vulcan falls back, losing a couple spots. Opix gets by him. Slaunch goes rogue at the end of the lap and takes the jump line, but gets an awkward landing and loses 2 spots. Lap 11, final lap. Detail makes a mistake in the sling, but still has a solid gap in front of Luke. Detail closes it out and takes the win. Luke second, Phil third, Cambi fourth, and Opix fifth. Moto 2 line up at the gate. Shift, Armada, Jared, and Blake. Ricardo, Elite, Vulcan, and Slaunch. Opix, Cambi, Phil, and Luke. Detail all on his own in the back row. Green flag and Elite has an amazing jump to take the whole shot from the second row. Slaunch, Shift, and Jared all go down early in the downhill chicane. Phil and Vulcan have big issues going down in the hairpins. Elite leads early, Cambi has a great run to second, and Armada holds the last podium spot. Lap 2, Detail has worked his way up to 5th early on, in a strong position for this moto. Armada goes down to the downhill chicane, and loses a ton of position. Shift goes down as well. Cambi sends it on the Joker, and Blake follows along. Slaunch and Vulcan take their Joker as well. Lap 3, Luke and Vulcan have an aggressive battle out of the cave, and Luke just gets the spot. Detail takes the spot from Elite and just barely makes it out in front of Phil, who takes his Joker. Opix takes a Joker as well and gains lots of position. Lap 4, Luke has plenty of Joker drivers in front of him, but he has not taken his yet. Slaunch and Luke get by Elite, Detail and Luke both take their first Joker, and Elite does too. Elite barely pulls out in front of Cambi after the Joker, a huge moment for him. Lap 5, Elite, Cambi, and Blake have a great on-track battle. Lap 6, Blake goes down in the sand cave, Armada takes his Joker, and gains a few spots. Lap 7, Detail, Luke, and Elite have a big gap for the top 3. Blake holds off Opix in the top 5, and Cambi falls out of it. Lap 8, Opix has a strong run out of the downhill chicane, but he cannot make the pass on Blake. Lap 9, Opix, Cambi, and Ricardo are very close with each other. Blake not too far in front, still a good pack battle. Lap 10, Opix keeps getting right to Blake's bumper but can't make the pass until Blake messes up in the hairpins and Blake tries to recover with the rut cross in the cave but he didn't have enough track position for it to work. Lap 11, final lap. Detail and Luke have a very similar gap to Moto 1's. Detail maybe has a few more goose lengths this time around and is cruising to his 5th Moto win on the season and the sweep on the night. And he does it, he takes the sweep, Luke 2nd, Elite 3rd, Opix 4th, and Blake 5th. And that wraps up Season 6's Mirabilis race. First time on the Rallycross version of the track, and it definitely mixed things up. Real Dill held on for the championship, and Detail's performance at Mirabilis was good enough for him to take second over Slaunch at the very last moment by three points. Slaunch held on for his third place spot on the season. Grand Finals? Oh, not a big deal, just one of the most memorable Grand Finals of all time, with potentially the most memorable moment in all of our Halo 5 racing. No big deal. Definitely one that we will cover in more depth in a future HRL history. However, just in case you forgot, the results of that one was Detail first with 91 points, taking his first Grand Finals championship ever, Luke in a close second with 90, and Slaunch in a distant third with 83. However, he was in the running and a key factor in the championship until the very last race. Well, that's it for Season 6. Let's move forward to Season 7 and see what moves we had in store for our fifth consecutive Halo 5 main series season since we started back up in January 2017. about to race Formal GP version 2 to kick off Season 7, and to tell you the truth, Season 7 didn't have as many major changes as the other seasons did. It was mostly the same. We were pretty happy with the format at the time. The only real change was a little more focus being put on the RX, GP, and SX side of the schedule. Now there would only be two ovals featured in the regular season, and the Grand Final would have an RX instead of an oval, just like Season 6. This was a tough decision to make, but to be fair, I think there were already plans of doing an oval season in the near future at the time, so perhaps that was meant to make up for this. Anyways, onto the races. Real Dill actually started off this season super strong. 
winning three of the first four motos, Slaunch taking the other one, and of course, Real Dill takes both overalls. After this, Detail responded with two overalls of his own, and then Slaunch took his first as well. In the beginning, it looked like it could be a Detail and Real Dill battle, the fight of the Season 5 and 6 champions, but unfortunately, at a certain point in the season, Real Dill wasn't able to continue racing. That being said, Detail had caught fire before that, and it was looking like less of a battle before Real Dill bowed out but there was still always potential for a comeback. After Real Deal called it a season, it now became a battle of three for the points. Detail, Roman, and Slaunch. Slaunch would get most of the wins that Detail or Luke didn't, but Roman was more consistent and that would help him stay closer to Detail and points. He was also able to make more races than Slaunch, which helped quite a bit too. If Slaunch was able to get full starts, he could have put up quite the performance this season, considering it was his best in terms of wins all the way since season three. He put up three overalls and six moto wins, a great return to form. Roman only managed one moto win and one overall, but again, he showed up and was consistent. Detail, on the other hand, had quite the season in terms of wins, took home four overalls and a staggering 11 moto wins. That's right, 11. It seemed like this was the season where he put together the whole package. He had his strengths and weaknesses with the Season 5 regular season chip and his Season 6 grand finals chip, but in this season, the weaknesses didn't show very often. Moving forward, we go to Mirabilis, and as you could probably assume hearing those stats, it was a blowout this time around. This was unlike Roman and Detail's appearance at Mirabilis in Season 5, where there was still hope for Roman there. This time around, the hope was already lost a few rounds back. The season was just too strong for Detail, and the points were too separate in the top three. Detail first, Roman second, Slaunch third. It was pretty much the confirmed outcome. That being said, it's still a Mirabilis race. Let's watch it and see how it went. July 14th, 2018. The lineup, Detail, Luke, Roman, and Camby. Armada, Hunter, Elite, and Killer. Jared, Sector, and Atlantic. Green flag. Detail has a great jump on the gate and takes a strong early lead. Elite and Killer have a rough time through the downhill chicane. Hunter spins in the sling and Camby goes down. Detail, Luke, and Roman lead them down for lap one. Lap two, Armada is holding off Hunter for fourth. Armada goes down into the downhill chicane and loses plenty of track position. Atlantic has an awful crash through the cave. Camby and Killer take their jokers and come out right behind Roman. Detail also took his joker up front and built a massive lead. Lap 3, Luke takes his Joker and comes out a few goose lengths behind Detail. Hunter takes his as well, putting him into third. Lap 4, Armada goes for the Joker and he comes out in front of Camby but behind Roman and Hunter. Also, the entire backpack takes the Joker on the same lap. God. And Atlantic also takes. Lap 5, Roman takes his Joker and definitely loses time on Luke and Detail, but still holds on to third by quite a bit. Lap 6, Elite and Killer have a solid battle. Lap 7, Luke starts to close the gap a bit on Detail. A battle could be brewing. Lap 8, 1st and 2nd are now close, bumper to bumper. This race isn't over yet. Justin and Jared have a great battle through the cave, Justin throws. Lap 9, Luke must have made a mistake, as Detail has now about a 10 goose length gap on him. Roman has about the same gap to catch up to Luke, top 3 is looking settled. Justin and Jared battle continues, Justin mega throws this time. Lap 10, final lap, top 3 is super set. Hunter unfortunately gets stuck on a pole, Sag. Detail takes the win, Luke second, Roman third, Armada fourth, and Camby fifth. And eventually Hunter saves his goose, and here comes Sector to the inside. He slams Hunter out of the way, and then Hunter slams Jared off the track, almost flipping him out. And then Karma strikes as Hunter goes down right before the end of the lap. Jared passes him back. What a cheesy way to end this moto. Let's go on to moto two. Lineup, Atlantic, Hunter, Jared, and Justin. Killer, Elite, Camby, and Armada. Roman, Luke, and Detail in the back row. Gate drops and Justin and Jared have a horrible start. Massive contact in the back through the downhill chicane. Hunter goes off the berm and the hairpins. His bad luck continues and Elite follows it up with an unfortunate dismount afterwards where Justin drives him 20 feet away from his goose so he can't get back on it. Somehow, some way, Camby takes the early lead. Roman second and Detail third already. Lap 2, the lead battle is already heating up. Detail makes a nice pass on Roman at the end of the downhill chicane. Luke joins the battle by the time they get to the hairpins. Camby and Detail choose to take their joker early. Elite takes his as well, but comes out just behind Luke and Roman. Lap 3, Detail makes a slick pass into the first turn, nailing the rumble and taking the lead. Roman and Luke battle for third. Luke makes a power move in the cave, and Roman goes for a response that does not work at all and it costs him the spot to Luke and Elite. Champ takes his Joker. Lap 4, Roman works his way to Elite's inside in the downhill chicane and completes the pass. Roman takes his Joker to put him back into third, just in front of Luke by a few goose lengths. 
Sector and Jared take their Jokers as well. And Jared RKO's Armada on his Joker exit. Lap 5, Luke catches up to Roman's bumper and decides to take his Joker, putting himself in second behind Detail. But Detail has quite the lead gap. Lap 6, Hunter and Killer have a close battle through the sling. Camby maintains his third place over Roman. Lap 7, Roman is putting in heaters trying to catch up to Camby, but it might take him some time. Lap 8, Luke is making some gains on Detail, now within 3 or 4 gooses. Roman is starting to get closer to Camby. The third place battle might still be alive. Lap 9, Detail has a better lap this time around and stretches out his lead going into 2 to go. Lap 10, the lap time is very similar this time around. Maybe Luke gaining a slight bit, but not enough to challenge for the lead. Lap 11, final lap. Luke has a good rumble run and a great downhill chicane to open up the lap. Luke is now about a goose length behind. Luke goes for a Hail Mary move in the beginning of the cave, but he doesn't have the run he needs to make the pass. Detail has a solid run through the sling and brings his gap back up to two goose lengths. Luke's last chance is to hit the jump line, so he sends it and gets side by side with Detail exiting it, but it's not enough for him to get the line that he needs. Detail holds him off and takes the second moto and the sweep. Luke's second, Roman will clutch up at the end as well and pass Camby for third. Camby, of course, finishes fourth. Hunter fit. A replay of Camby and Roman's final lap battle, and it's a fantastic side-by-side -side through the final chicanes, and eventually Roman will get the line and take the spot on the last turn on the last lap. And that's going to do it for Season 7 Mirabilis, a great second moto to close out the season here. For the Grand Finals, Luke makes a comeback this time around after last season where he came up one point short to detail in the end. This time around, he wins two motos and puts in solid podiums to win this one with 91 points. Fireball finally makes a comeback with a strong second place, 88 points, and Detail finishes in third with 85. This is one of the most competitive grand finals that we ever ran. Fireball, Detail, and Slaunch won the overalls for the races. Luke, the winner of the tournament, did not take any. However, again, he took two motos and had consistent podium results. Fireball, Detail, Roman, and Slaunch all took one moto. And the points gap from Luke in first to Slaunch in fifth was just 12. Three points separating each of the drivers all the way from first to fifth. So, season seven may not have had the competitive champ battle in the regular season that most of our others did, but it made up for it with a great, well-rounded grand final. It was a fun season overall, but with it not being as competitive as the previous, we finally decided on something that we knew was coming for a while, since probably around the beginning of the year, I would say. It was time to switch things up. We had been doing basically the same main series format with some minor adjustments since we started again in 2017. It was still fun, but the burnout was starting to set in. We needed to take a new direction to spice things up again. Remember when I told you about Adrenaline way back in the beginning of this? Well, you're gonna see HRL inspired by Adrenaline in season eight. Let's move on to the first Halo 5 oval season. August 10th, 2018. It was time for us to make a change. We had been doing relatively the same format on H5 for over a year and a half at this point, and while it had a great run and it was fun in its own right, the burnout was definitely starting to set in. While we were still getting decent lobbies, they definitely weren't as full as they were before, and the competition was starting to dwindle. What better time than now to do something different? Take the league a completely new direction for a season and see how it goes. Well, we set to do that with Season 8, the Oval Season. Now, this season doesn't have a Mirabilis race, yes, there was never a Mirabilis Oval, sorry about that, maybe in the next game. Anyways, it may not have had a Mirabilis race, but I think all the mainline H5 seasons are important to look at in telling our story, so we won't go as in-depth with Season 8, however, I still want to cover it. So, what was so different about Season 8? Let's go down the list. First of all, as you can imagine, this was an entirely Oval season, 12 races, all Ovals, no exceptions. Second, a vastly different format than what we were used to on Halo 5. No two moto format, no heats, just qualifying and one long race. Third and final, pit stops. We used to do pit stops and incorporate pit strategy into the adrenaline races, and definitely added an extra layer to the races that can make things very intriguing at times. I should also mention that we switched to laps instead of timed races as well to make these pits work better. I had always wanted to do pit stops in an HRL series at some point, and I figured now is the time with the way the rest of the format was laid out. Well, now that you know the format and what was so different about Season 8, let's do a brief crash course on how the season went. Slaunch won the opener with a strong performance on Jetta Dome, Luke would win round 2, Roman round 3, Fireball round 4, and Camby round 5. Five races in the beginning with five different winners. Potentially a new record for us. 
then Fireball and Camby got in a groove, Fireball taking a second, and Camby following that up with his second win as well. After that, Roman took a win on his home track, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, his second on the season as well. His teammate Luke followed that performance up with his second win of the season at Tribus Valley. Three races to go, Slaunch took his second win of the season as well on Reeseville Raceway, track he was traditionally good at, however, in a bit of a different style here. Then Luke closed out the season with two more wins on Hollywood and Barbo. Fireball and Slaunch alternating second and third in these races. Luke had strong wins, but was not in competition this season. Fireball was, and finally took his first regular season championship in HRL. Luke would take second and elite in third. Slaunch, Roman, and Camby likely would have been up there for the podium spots if they had the attendance. It's unfortunate that they didn't for this season because when they showed up, they were all on form. And the champ battle with Fireball could have been way more spicy than it was, but oh well. Season eight was a fun departure from our consistent format. And in the beginning, we had many drivers, new ones included, showing up in droves to these races. The beginning of Season 8 was quite exciting with these fields, and honestly, it was very fun. However, as with most seasons, it started to drop off again at around the midway point, and while those races were still a good time, they definitely didn't have the spark that the early ones did with the full lobbies and chaotic races with pitch strategy. That being said, Season 8 was an overall positive and opened up the eyes of many drivers that were not interested in doing an oval series previously. Now they might think differently and it was a more popular choice after season eight. September 21st, 2018. After getting our deserved break from the main series with the Opal season, we decided to run it back with that good old main series format one more time in season nine with many changes from what we were used to since season four. For starters, we took the one race format from Season 8. No motos here in Season 9. We also did away with the semi and qualifying. Now we would just do heats and the race. Also, we brought laps back from Season 8. No more timed races here either. Basically, we simplified. While the format that we were building in the last few seasons was fun for a while, it started to feel a bit extra at the end. We re-evaluated for Season 9, took away the bits that didn't feel necessary, and kept the ones that worked. And the Season 9 format is what we came up with. Honestly, it's kind of a throwback to OG HRL from Reach. All the different track categories, just heats, and one race, quite similar. Anyways, let's get into the season. And so it starts with Salt Lake, and this was another minor, but quite noticeable for the drivers, change in Season 9. We had never started a main series season with a Supercross before. It was always a GP or GK previously. We did this slight change to switch up the feel of this last season even more so. Luke took the first race, put Detail in second, and Slaunch third. Then we go to Beckham. Quite the race here where Detail ends up winning his first of the season. And after that, we arrive at Chili Cup, which funnily enough is probably the race that Season 9 is mostly remembered for. If you don't recall why, well, just allow me to remind you, this is the race that Justin Black Thunder Baker won in Season 9, his first and only Halo 5 win in his career. He did win some races on Halo 4 back in the day, but never in Halo 5 until this moment. He found himself starting in third in a late race restart, took the lead quickly, and ran away with it. It was such an underdog upset story that many of our drivers still bring up this win to this day. Certainly an iconic moment in Halo 5. Fireball and Luke trade off wins for five rounds after that, and Slaunch finally gets one on his own track at Outlands in round nine. At this point, things get a little weird, there's one other big change to Season 9 that I failed to mention, so allow me to explain. The last night of Season 9 was a triple header. Guerco, Barvo, and Mirabilis. Kinda crazy. Why make the end of the regular season a triple header? Well, it wasn't just the end of the regular season. It was also the grand final. We decided to mix things up with the finale here immensely in Season 9, combining the end of the regular season and the grand final. An idea that would pseudo return kind of in Season 14. Basically, the last three races would count towards the regular season normally, but they would also be their own re-race grand final tournament going on at the same time. Again, kinda wild, but if we were doing the main series again in Season 9, we wanted to mix things up a bit, and there's also another factor. In case you didn't recognize the background music for this portion, that is the Black Ops 4 theme. Now one of my favorite jokes about Season 9 is that it was the Black Ops 4 season, since we squeezed this season into a tight window before the game was released. Well, the Grand Finals actually literally took place on the day that it was released, but you know, we're close enough. Truthfully, I mostly say this because the idea of it is kinda of funny, trying to get a season in before a game release because you just wanna grind the game once it comes out. But that's not the primary reason why we did this. We actually were just really starting to feel the effects of burnout at this point. 
Understandably so, as we had been busting our asses off working on these Halo 5 series since the start of 2016 with minimal breaks. We needed a longer break to regain and rejuvenate our passion for doing these, but we also wanted one last dance before that. To be completely honest, we didn't know at the time whether Season 9 would be our last season, or at the very least our last main series season, on Halo 5. We might come back in 2019, and we might not. That long break period was what we were going to use to determine that. So that's why we ran Season 9 the way that we did. The fast-paced nature of the season was on purpose. We had enough left in the tank to give another month to a finale season, but we also wanted that break quickly. So we made sure the season only took about a month. Let me reiterate, at the time, this was effectively our last main series season and potentially our last Halo 5 season in general. We needed the break so bad that we weren't set on running another one. Obviously, knowing what we know now, this wasn't the case, but I just want to stress that point, because looking back on this season, it puts it in a completely different light than we would see it now. Anyways, now that you know that, let's cover the final regular season races and grand final of Season 9 and get to that, at the time, last hurrah at Mirabilis. First race of the grand final triple header is Mount Guerco, and Detail starts off strong, taking the win there, Luke second, and Real Duel third. Then we go to Barvo. Luke bounces back at Barvo. Real Dill puts in another strong finish, taking second, and Detail rounds out the podium in third. Luke leads the points for this grand final, going into our final race at Mirabilis. October 12th, 2018, the release date of Black Ops 4 and the day of our potential last run on Halo 5. We line up at Mirabilis yet again. Detail, Fireball, Hunter, and Luke, and then Real Deal, Roman, and Slaunch. We would take two Jokers for the Rallycross this time around, and 20 laps for this race. Green flag! Real Deal unfortunately speedruns hitting a rock, and Detail takes the lead. Hunter has a strong start, taking second place early on. Roman makes a nice pass on Hunter in the downhill chicane. Luke, Real Deal, and Fireball, three strong drivers going into this race, and two grand finals contenders with Luke and Real Deal fall way back early on. Detail takes an early Joker, just trying to take advantage of his strong start as much as he can. Lap two, Luch gets a little sentimental in the commentary. For one, like, one immediate one I can go through is just, like, how great the racing's been coming back to Halo 5. You know, HRL and Halo 5 in general. Been a lot of fun, a lot of competitive battles, uh, whether it's, you know, me on the commentating side of things. Even though I sort of lost my love for it towards the end, there's been a lot of videos that I've always been, you know, I went into, like, excited to make and looking forward to commentate because there's just been some great races. And a lot of races that I'm just like fired up after because of how good the actual just racing is. And Real Dill sends his second Joker and moves into the lead. Slaunch uses one as well. Lap 3, Detail takes his second Joker and has a massive lead now over Real Dill. Luke takes his first and comes out just behind Slaunch. Lap 4, Slaunch pulls a Roman. Do you see what I did there? And loses the spot to Luke. Fireball executes a pass very well on Hunter in the Sand Cave. Lap 5, Fireball makes gains on Roman and goes for a Joker. He pulls out in front of Slaunch after taking it. Lap 6, the race is looking to be between Luke and Detail yet again, but Detail has a massive advantage at the moment. However, there are still many laps to go. Lap 7, Real Dill pops a massive two-wheel going into the sand, and he saves it. Lap 8, the field is mostly gapped at this point. Lap 9, Luke finally goes for his second Joker and makes multiple passes up to second place. Lap 10, Real Dill has a cheese in the uphill, and Slaunch makes a move past Fireball. Fireball has issues this lap. Lap 11, Fireball has fallen behind Real Dill and makes a mistake trying to get by him in the downhill chicane, costing him even more time. Detail, Luke, and Slaunch, the current top three, a fitting throwback to the Season 1 Mirabilis race. Lap 12, Fireball keeps making mistakes, Roman gets by him for 5th place. Lap 13, Roman is starting to find a groove and is making up time quickly on Real Deal. He finally takes his Joker and comes out in front of Slaunch, moving Roman to third, Slaunch fourth, and Real Deal fifth. Lap 14, Detail still has a strong lead and is on a Sunday drive to his fifth moto win in a row at this track. Lap 15, Slaunch finds some speed and starts to gain on Roman. Lap 16, they're now close and Slaunch switches to the jump line to try to make a move. It's not successful, but Roman is now definitely aware of his presence. Lap 17, Slaunch is throwing it down the chicane to try to make up this gap to Roman. He just needs to find the place to make the pass stick. Lap 18, the battle continues. Roman has some fast sectors, Slaunch has some fast sectors, and it about equals out in the end. Lap 20, final lap. Slaunch decides now is the time, and he sends it in the sand cave, and he makes it happen. He makes the pass on Roman on the final lap to get his podium spot back. In the end, Detail closes it out with the win, Luke second, Slaunch third, Roman fourth, and Real Deal fifth. Roman loses full after the race and drives off the map and drives off 
into the sunset. Detail secures the regular season and the Grand Finals Championship with this win. Again, his fifth moto win on this track in a row. Taking the Grand Finals over Luke by four points. Detail with 92, Luke with 88. Real Deal finishes third in this Grand Finals with 72. And for now, that was it. Season nine concluded and we all went our separate ways, not knowing what the future had in store for HRL. So that was it. After season nine, HRL was in a state of limbo. Personally, I wanted time away from the league. Running this hot streak of seasons, three through nine, for basically two years straight, stressed me out a ton at the time. And gaming wise, I just wanted to grind Black Ops 4 with my childhood friend Clayton and others, and enjoy my time away from racing, and more so, the management. That being said, it wouldn't be accurate to say that I carried the entire weight on my shoulders. I had plenty of help from others along the way. In Reach, it was Turkey Shot. In Halo 4 and MCC, it was Matt and Slaunch. And in Halo 5, I had several drivers that would help me with the management side of things. In particular, Opix, Detail, and Real Deal. That group of three definitely agreed that the time away was necessary. But towards the end of the year, they started talking about bringing it back. I was still far removed from the management side at this time, and they had full control to do this if they pleased. And in December 2018, the group came to a decision. So let's go. So let's go. We did return the following year, January 2019, Luke would still be taking time off on the racing side, but HRL was back with most of our H5 regulars competing in something different. A GP season. The decision was made to run something different yet again. A 12 race GP only season with a similar format to that of season nine. Heats in one feature race, laps used as well. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of footage for this season, so the background might be rough for this segment, but we'll get through it. All right, the season started on January 18th, 2019 at Belfast. Fireball would win the opener, taking the points lead, then Real Dill struck off two in a row at Darude Sandstorm, which was another track that was featured in the countdown, and Mount Panorama. Detail needed to heat up after that, and he did, winning two in a row of his own at Kitty Hawk and Oriac. Maybe we could have that points battle between Real Dill and Detail here that could have potentially happened in Season 7, but faded away. Sixth round, North Bloom. Real Dill brings it back with his third victory on the season. But then, for the seventh round, disaster strikes for Real Deal. We go to Dillion V3, a new version of one of Detail's originals for Halo 5, and he runs it very well, winning the race. Real Deal, however, does not. He runs his worst race of the season and drops off the points lead tremendously. To be fair to Real Deal, he brought it back with another win in the following race at Cherry Blossom, but this was likely too little, too late at this point. He'd have to have a historic streak to end off the season to bring his championship back against Detail. Now we go to round nine, where a twist occurs. Luke returns for the round at Road Atlantis and could not best Detail, who takes his fourth win of the season. However, Luke still has a strong comeback performance, taking second, and Slaunch takes third, his fifth third place of the season, by the way. After that, Luke went on a roll for the last three rounds, finding his groove again, winning all of them at Sherman, Adesanya, and finally Beckham Beach. Detail has a rough run at Sherman, but regains for two second places at Adesanya and Beckham, closing out another regular season championship for him there would be no grand finals for the GP season. In the end, Detail would take the championship with a 25 point gap over Real Deal. They both scored four wins in the season, but Detail had two extra podiums and top fives, which makes quite a difference in a close champ battle. Remember all those third places Slaunch had? They added up and he passed Roman in points after the final round, taking yet another podium points finish for himself in a Halo 5 season, beating Roman for the spot by just three points. Overall, the GP season was a fun experiment at the time, and generally went well. However, in a twist of fate after the season concluded, the resounding opinion was to bring back the main series yet again for Season 11. And that we did.
Now it's April 19th, 2019, and in a bit of a turn of events, we are now preparing to run yet another main series season on Halo 5. We took some precaution before this one, running a blast from the past tournament beforehand where we raced eight different classic tracks in one night. Two rally cross races, two GPs, two ovals, and two supercross. That went very well, and was to this day one of my favorite nights in Halo racing, if not my favorite. After that, we knew that we definitely wanted to do this, and we sent on another main series season. The format this time around was very similar to the new format that we had been running since season 9. Laps, longer races, and just heats in the pre-race. Track-wise, we were likely going to do mostly GP and SX, with a fair share of ovals and RX thrown in as well. Let's see how it goes. Our season kicked off with Dillian V3, where Luke took the first race, Real Dill coming in second, and Detail third. Luke made it two in a row at Holy Gardens, which was a bit of a Halo 4 throwback track, and this also continued Luke's win streak for the mainline season races, now at five. Three in a row at the end of GP, and two in a row to start Season 11. Detail finally had enough of that, and in Round 3, at our beloved classic track Barvo, he took his first win of the season, and he followed it up with another win at Ozetta RX the following week. After that, Luke went on a tear yet again, taking three in a row from Goaty to Frontier and ending at Chili Cup. Pancake joined in late at Goaty and took his first win at Kings Canyon, following it up with two in a row the next week at Dusty Ridge. Unfortunately, at this point in the season, the field had started to fade yet again. The beginning went well, but towards the end, it seemed that maybe going for the main series again wasn't the correct choice after all. That being said, we were still committed to closing out the season instead of leaving it in the dust like Season 2 in the past. So we ran one final race, the 10th round at Mirabilis RX. Unfortunately, there was no footage for this one, but I will tell you that the top three was Slaunch, Detail, and Hunter. Slaunch finally checked Mirabilis off of his list of classic tracks to win at. He'd won at pretty much every other classic in Halo 5, and it was about time that he got one here at Mirabilis. Championship-wise, it ended up being a battle between Detail and Slaunch in the end. Detail taking it by 20 points this time around, Slaunch hanging on for second, and Roman taking third. Season 11 makes me think about what could have been. It seemed like a great idea at the time, especially after the Blast from the Past tournament, but in retrospect, perhaps we should have just let the main series rest for a little while longer. Unfortunately, the burnout at the end of Season 11 was the end for HRL Racing in 2019. To be fair, the year was still pretty decent. We had a great first half, but it's unfortunate that we were not closing out as strong as we did in that original year of 2017. Also, would we ever come back? Yet again, like the end of Season 9 and many times in the past, we're in a state of limbo, not knowing the answer to that question. And there we were, back in limbo. What would be the way out of the hole this time? Well, the answer might surprise some of you, but I would actually credit it to my discovery of the Witcher series in late 2019. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I made the Black Ops 4 connection as well. Hear this one out, and please pay attention for upcoming track names. They definitely prove this to be true on some level. Okay, so on December 20th, 2019, the first season of the Witcher Netflix show was released. I watched it, and it hooked me. I quickly ordered the first two books, installed The Witcher 3 on my Xbox, and went on my PC as well. I absolutely fell in love with the world of The Witcher and inspired me in many ways, one of them being HRL. Yes, it may be a loose connection, but my passion for gaming in general was hitting a rough patch at this point in time, unlike what I had experienced in Season 9 with Black Ops 4 rejuvenating it. The Witcher show led me to the games, which reignited my passion for gaming in all aspects, not just The Witcher. Quickly, I wanted to rekindle my old gaming passions, and one of the most impactful for me was Halo and Halo Racing. What do you know, we did come back yet again, this time in 2020. Yep, the year of good old COVID. But this honestly didn't play a huge factor into our racing this year. We got most of it in before COVID really started to pop off. So what would yet another comeback for us look like? Oval Season, the sequel. A bit of a different format this time around, but yes, we were gonna do Oval Season 2. 10 rounds, two moto format, back with heat races. We began on January 31st, 2020, with a double header of Barvo and Yeti. Detail had a great start to the season, sweeping all the races on this double header, then bowing out the rest of the season like a true Giga Chad. After that, Luke swept the next double header of 
Portland, and Vengerberg, but was not competing for this one yet again. So Vulcan actually was the one with the points lead at this stage. Another doubleheader afterwards, Roman and Luke traded wins in this one. Then we got to Pepper Jack Park with a famous real deal moment, one of my all-time favorites. This is a pretty good dispute right here. I'm just going to skip past all this because nobody needs to see this. Line back up. Ready to go. And green flag. Really nice start for Slunch. Oh, that, that was the one that got cheesed. All right, well, I guess we're pacing around again. Actual green flag. Great restart there. Oh, Roman on the outside wall. It's tough. Oh, is this where Vulcan got mad? Did he quit here? It looks like he lost full. Let's see what happened. Oh, that's just unfortunate. Vulcan, like, three wides throughout the pack. Oh, then... Alright, let's just... You know what? I'll just show this. Yeah, I don't know if anybody finds that funny. I don't find it very funny. You guys can just watch the racing, because I don't really want to say anything, so... You guys can just watch the race. I guess I'll just say it now. Uh, apologies go out to Vulcan and Roman for this race. Roman and Luke would split wins here again. Roman now takes the points lead. We went to Chile for our classic four motos of Chile that we hadn't run in a very long time. Luke taking the first and last, and Armada and Roman taking the middle two. Then we closed out the season with a double header on the other two ovals for the Pepperjack Park Complex. Luke sweeping the first, Fireball sweeping the second. Not sure why we had so many sweeps this season, but it was still good fun. We had some great races and found some new ovals with good potential like Portland and Vengerberg. Ultimately, Roman would win the championship here, his first in HRL, with Armada coming in second and Vulcan in a close third, only four points off of Armada. Overall, the second oval season was a success. We didn't have as big of lobbies as we did before, but they were still decent and we had a consistent core group that showed up to most of the races. And generally, we had a pretty good time. That core group was the key, something that we would miss the mark on in the following season, the quarantine season. Hi, COVID. Truthfully, there's not a lot to discuss with Season 13, so I'm going to keep this one brief. Season 13 was set to run in April 2020, and we were taking a new approach of running shorter races and shorter seasons to experiment a bit, try different tracks and track types, and maybe find a new home of consistency. Something to take the main series place until we decided to return to it. So what was the idea with Season 13? It was short tracks. Quick ovals, arena crosses, and TRS, which we were finally bringing to Halo 5. Season 13 got off to a great start. The first night went well, especially the TRS race. We didn't know how it would work or if it would even work at all in Halo 5, but that first track with that particular lobby did. Fireball would sweep the oval and the arena cross, Hoppix and Luke would split motos on the TRS, and we were off to a decent start. Then came the second night, and remember what I said about the core group being the key? We started to branch out and bring new people into the running for Season 13, and some oldies that probably shouldn't have been asked to return. Drama ensued from that, and I'll leave it at that. We would not make the same mistake again. Unfortunately, after the absolute bullshit that we dealt with in the second night, we did not have any interest in returning to finish out Season 13. Sadly, that was going to be it for us again, after such a great start to the year with the second oval season. This time was quite different from the others as well. I know I said that there was uncertainty with HRL coming back with all the other endings, and while that was true, this one was different. And for a while, that would really be the end. Here we were again. The League was on hiatus, and funnily enough, so was the world. But no matter how bleak the future looked, we couldn't lose hope. The night is darkest just before the dawn, and the dawn was coming. But for now, we'd make it through the darkness and stay patient. Have you ever wondered why we're here? It's one of life's great mysteries, isn't it? Why do we come back to you? The mongoose physics suck. Every piece of terrain is inhabited with gophers. Every lobby has crashes. And Halo Infinite is out right now! All your flaws, all your cheese, all your... <sighs> it's a hell of a question, and a lot of people certainly don't have the answer. Well, why do we keep coming back to you? Because it's fun. Because the years that have gone by are full of great memories. The banter between friends, the competition between rivals, the community, the forge sessions. The satisfaction of putting together something that no one else would. Despite the bumps and gophers in the road, we made it work. 
And so, for one last ride, we are coming back. Halo Infinite's Forge and the game in general is gonna be a while before it's ready. So in the meantime, let's get it. If you ever wondered why we're here, it's because it's fun. And it's because we love to race. Yep, it was really the end for almost two years. In 2021, we didn't do any official seasons, something that had well, never been the case ever since we started in 2012. Season 13 ending the way it did really left a sour taste in our mouths and it would take a while for the core group of management to get back together and want to run it back. But in late 2021, something changed. Halo Infinite released and while it didn't have a forge, it was on the way. And the release of the game brought a lot of hype back to Halo. This hype, as you can imagine, applied to the core group of HRL as well. So we got back together. Talks began and quickly a plan formed. We didn't have Forge and Infinite yet, but why not give Halo 5 one more go? One more run at a main series format, one more true season, a final send off that the game deserved. One more time, we hit the Crim 6, I'm not done yet. So we built up a crap load of hype in the weeks leading up to February 2022 and made very ambitious plans for this last season. In the beginning, the idea was to do a different type of format that would still feature many of the categories of tracks that we would do in the main series, but segment it a bit and feature some new ones too. We are going to run six stages of different racing through the following months, and each of these stages would have their own points race. Oh, and there would also be a grand finals stage after that. Your finishes in these stages would award you points for the overall points race. Confused? I don't blame you. It's honestly not that confusing, but it's hard to explain and quite different than anything we had done. But don't worry, we would toss that idea away shortly, but I still want to cover the stages to give you the whole story. February 11th, 2022, Eagle River. Six years to the day from when we started back in 2016 on Halo 5. It was fittingly where we would also kick off our last season, number 14. The season 14 hype, thanks to the trailer and hard work promoting it from our drivers and managers, spread wide throughout the community, and we had great attendance pretty much all throughout our final run, even having LCQs quite often, especially in this first stage. One more thing before we get into the race itself, the season format may have been quite different and experimental, but the race format was mostly back to our roots. We did do laps again, but for pre-race, we just did heats, and again, the LCQ, if needed. And two motos were back for the show. This is definitely the one thing that we got right from the beginning with Season 14. This format was always our best, and would work well for the comeback. Alright, now on to the races. Stage 1, Go-Kart. Eagle River. <laughs> Detail had a great heat race, and he ran away with the first moto as well. Pancake had a good late race charge at the end, but it ended up being too little, too late. Moto 2, Real Deal puts in a strong performance, takes the Moto, and the overall. Our first overall top 3, Real Deal, Opix, and Luke. Probably not what anyone predicted, but at this point, we should have known to expect the unexpected at Eagle River. Race 2 at Jon Snow, Pancake takes his first Moto win, and Luke takes the second. Pancake wins the overall, then Detail second, and Luke third. And that overall order would repeat for the next two races. Bushnell, Luke wins Moto 1, and Real Deal goes big in Moto 2 again. Lake Michigan, Detail puts in a strong race in Moto 1, takes the win there, and then Hunter would come out on top in Moto 2. Now the script starts to change a bit when we get to Targaryen the second to last race of the stage. Luke wins the first moto here, and Nuked takes the second. Overall wise, we finally have a change up. This time, it's Luke first overall, Sully second, and Pancake third. With mulligans factored in, this shakes up the points battle for the stage tremendously, going into the last race at Badger Kart Club. The battle for stage one was down to Pancake, Detail, and Luke, and would essentially come down to whoever put in the best last race. Pancake had a one point advantage going into it over Luke, then Detail was three points off of Luke. Oh yeah, there's one more factor that would spice things up. The last race would be a three moto triple crown event. Remember when I said that the Season 9 end of season format would kind of come back in a way? Well, this is what I was referring to. It's not exactly the same, but there's a similar concept here. The Triple Crown was supposed to be like a mini Grand Final-esque event at the end of every stage to cap it off, but all the points would contribute to the stage standings normally. There was just an extra moto. Alright, now that we've explained that, let's get into the finale for Stage 1. 
Badger Kart Club. Detail and Luke won their respective heats, but it would be Luke who'd strike first in Moto 1, taking the win there. Then Moto 2, we saw a change up. Hunter would actually take this one, but Luke would put in another strong performance, putting him in a favorable position to take the stage. Pancake or Detail needed a strong bounce back in the third moto, and it would be Pancake who would answer the call and take the win there. But Luke had another podium performance, and the win from Pancake wasn't enough to make up the gap that was created in the first two motos. Luke would take the first stage, Pancake second, and Detail third, in an exciting month of racing to kick things off. Only five points separated Luke and Pancake in the end, and three separated Pancake from Detail. There were plenty of other close gaps throughout the field as well. The stage format was off to a good start. Then the TRS debacle happened. However, it didn't start off bad. Let's dive into what happened with the TRS stage and why we decided to change things following it. The TRS stage actually started off pretty good. Volition and Stonehenge were well made for the lobby sizes that we had, and the races on those tracks were solid. Pancake started off the stage strong with a couple overalls and moto wins. Detail and Real Deal would take the other motos. And then the following three TRS races happened. And this was probably the least fun three races that I had done in Halo 5. The reason the first two TRS tracks worked well is the tracks were quite sizable and they had collisions, but not too many. The other three tracks said fuck both of these factors and were either super small or went all in on having as many collisions as possible. In old TRS races with eight or so people, this would have been totally fine, but with full lobbies, it was incredibly frustrating. And if you add this onto talks with management about the stage format not being the play already happening as early as the middle of the go-kart stage, and we knew we needed to switch something up. We called the TRS stage early and took some time to reevaluate how we would move forward. About a month later, we'd figured out how we wanted to move forward. Here's the situation. We still wanted to give Halo 5 a send-off, but at the same time, we didn't want to spend as much time on it as we'd originally planned. Part of the reason for this is that we started a side series, World of Outlaw Season 4. We started it when TRS went off the rails, and this series was incredibly fun. A lot of us, after doing those races, were leaning towards going back to MCC, specifically with H2A, and exploring that ground that wasn't covered at the time because of how much of a shit show MCC was in the beginning. H5 was fun for the time, but there were a few reasons why it was so hard to get a full season in on it post-2018. So let's go through those reasons. One, it was pretty played out especially the main series format. Yes, the obvious response to that is, well, then why did you want to do the send-off in that format? My response would be, well, the main series was Halo 5. Sure, we may have branched off and did some other series at times, but damn near all of the best memories and iconic moments on Halo 5 were in the main series. If we were bringing back racing and not doing the main series, then we'd rather just go on MCC and try out new things. Two, interest. To be fair, this one was solved for the most part in this season, but it was definitely starting to wane a bit towards the end of the TRS stage format. And if this continued, then this long-term format might fizzle out and not be as enjoyable at the end. And three, as much fun as we had on it, and as much as we made it work, racing-wise, Halo 5 was a tough cookie. Basically, the best way I can put it is this. Halo 5 didn't work for us, we made it work for us. Many leagues didn't even want to bother with this game, and we made it work for years and years, but at some point, you have to move on. So where does that leave us in May 2022? With a plan for the future, we'd do a shortened format that was originally supposed to be 12 races and ended up getting shortened even more to eight races. So in the end, it would be two GPs, two Supercrosses, two ovals, and two rallycross races. It wasn't planned this way, but it basically turned out to be a blast from the past tournament, except it wouldn't be over the course of one night, and it would have heats and motos. It'd be a fresh start, we would do this for seven weeks because of there being one doubleheader, and then that would be it for Halo 5. Oh, and what was the last race? Well, you probably already figured, but the stages started where Halo 5 started with Eagle River, and this Season 14 Part 2 would end where that first season ended as well, at Mirabilis. Let's take a look at Season 14 Part 2. And here we go. May 6th, 2022. The first track on the schedule is Darude Sandstorm V2. We already raced Eagle River in the stages, so we go back to our roots in a different way and make sure the season starts with a GP. Pancake gets off to a hot start and sweeps Darude. Then we go to Penitentiary, where he starts off carrying the momentum, winning the first moto, but then has a rough second. Fireball takes advantage and wins that moto and the overall. Round three, we go to our first oval of the season, one that's been waiting to be raced for a long, long time, made by Opix 
Flarian Ring. This track turned out great, and in my opinion, was the most fun race that we did in our Halo 5 return, including the stages. The races were great. Detail took the first moto, which had a great lead battle pretty much the entire way, and Fireball just barely beat out Luke in the second, and Detail would end up taking the overall. He'd also make some gains on Pancake's points lead as well, as Pancake had a rough second moto on Clarion. In fact, the point situation after Clarion painted a clear picture on what the battle would be for this final run. Pancake was in the lead with 87, Detail second with 84, Luke third with 83, and Fireball fourth with 81 just six points separating the current leader with fourth place after six rounds. That's honestly really good considering how previous seasons have went. I think most people could have predicted a three-way battle involving Detail, Pancake, and Luke for this last run, but Fireball was perhaps a bit of a dark horse. To be fair to him though, he was always really fast in Halo 5. He picked up on things so quickly. It did not take him long to win his first race and be competitive after being a rookie. It only took a few rounds for him to do it. So while it probably wouldn't have been predicted, I think it made sense that Fireball would be in this race. Perhaps the situation of it being the last run on H5 lit a fire under him. I'm not sure, but either way, he was a very important player in this game. Now that the stage was properly set for our final championship battle, we'd move into Portugal RX for the fourth race, and our first of the doubleheader. Luke had a strong Moto 1 and ran away with that one, taking his first Moto win of the season. Then Detail took his second in Moto 2. With this win, Detail would also take the points lead by just one point. On to the second race of the night, Lock Arock GP. Luke had another strong Moto 1, taking his second Moto win on the night and the season, and Fireball would be the guy to take Moto 2, making that his third on the season. Now, we had three races left, six Motos, and we were in a situation where Detail and Luke both had two Moto wins, Fireball and Pancake both had three, and the points were as follows. Luke now had the lead by two points with 146, Pancake second with 144, and Detail third with 143, as well as Fireball fourth with 138 over halfway through the season, and it was only eight points separating first to fourth. We couldn't ask for a much better champ battle to cap off Halo 5. Round six, the second Supercross, Porto Rosso, a new one forged by Roman specifically for this season. Luke had a strong start early on in Moto 1, but would make some mistakes early. Pancake would take advantage and get by and hold on for the win, his fourth on the season. In Moto 2, Luke would get another strong start, but clean up on the mistakes this time and take the win, his third. The points lead remains at two since Luke and Pancake both put up a first and second place on the night. Detail took third in both motos, and Fireball actually took fourth in both, keeping them in the battle, but definitely losing a bit of ground. They'd both need a strong performance at our next race, Barvo, to bring this back into their favor. Isn't it fitting that Barvo and Mirabilis, our top two tracks on the track countdown, would also be the two tracks to close out our final season. We loaded up Barvo Moto 1, and it was an absolute cheese fest. Not short of drama, but when all that was sorted, Luke would take the win for Moto 1 in a GWC that finally went green to the end. Soul would take second, spicing things up a bit, and Pancake would settle for third. On to Moto 2. This one was quite a bit cleaner. Less cautions, more green flag action than Moto 1. And thank Bob it would not have any GWCs. Detail had a strong start, but eventually started to fall back, and Pancake and Luke got by. The two would have a close battle that ended in a crazy photo finish that is still so hard to see, but Pancake scored the victory by the slimmest of margins. This was a massive win for him to keep the battle alive still. If Luke had won this moto, it was going to be tough for him to make up that gap at Mirabilis, but this win definitely kept Pancake's hopes alive, and even though Luke would build one point in the lead, it was still either man's game going into the last race. Unfortunately, Detail and Fireball did not have the results they were hoping for, and it was looking like they would be duking it out for third and fourth in this final race. That being said, they still put up a good fight, and I definitely still consider this season a four-way battle. I mean, Fireball won three motos, and Detail put up two, and kept up with Pancake's podium count. It only became a two-man race in the second half. The first half was truly anyone's championship to take. All right, the points going into our final race of the season, and our last one at Mirabilis. Luke at 210, Pancake with 207, Detail with 194, and Fireball with 190. The gap between first to fourth had now grown to 20. So yeah, it was definitely no longer a four-way battle at this point. It was a three-point fight between Luke and Pancake, and a four-point fight between Detail and Fireball. Let's head to Mirabilis.
into the tango for our last dance. One more round, two more motos at Mirabilis. 11 laps in each, 10 drivers left in the field. Armada, Sol, Solange, Roman, Hunter, Opix, Detail, Fireball, Pancake, and Loot. Green flag for the final time at Mirabilis. Luke gets a great jump out of the gate. The rest of the field is extremely tight into the downhill chicane. Sol has an unfortunate spin there and loses ground. Luke leads the first lap down. Lap two, Detail has a nice run on Pancake in the first turn, but is unable to make anything happen with it. Roman has a weird lag flip in the cave, unfortunately, and Armada has a bit of a moment there as well. Sol takes his first Joker, and in case you hadn't noticed, we have a new slow Joker on this version of Mirabilis, possibly one of the best changes for the Rallycross version. Lap three, Fireball hits a tire at the end of the lap and loses a spot to Slaunch. A big pile up in the downhill chicane, Armada hit the pole, Opix couldn't avoid it, and Roman got slightly involved as well, but he worked his way by both of them to take two positions. Hunter takes his first joker and unfortunately comes out right behind Opix. Lap 4, Hunter and Opix have a great fight past the finish line, and Hunter completes the pass. Luke, Pancake, and Detail are still the top three order, and they still have around five goose length gaps on each other. Roman and Hunter decide to take jokers, Hunter's second, I believe Roman's first. Lap 5, Detail makes a play and goes for his first Joker. It gets a little close with Slaunch on the exit, but he safely pulls away from him. Fireball also takes his second. Lap 6, a relatively calm lap. The gaps stay the same, but time is running out for Jokers. Lap 7, Pancake and Luke still have a close gap, but not close enough for any moves to be made just yet. Roman takes his second Joker, and Hunter goes by while he does it. Lap 8, Slaunch takes his first Joker, and it looks like when he takes his second, Fireball will likely pass him. Lap 9, Pancake had a set of good laps and made gains, but now the last two laps have gone Luke's way, and he stretched it back out a bit. Luke goes for his first Joker, and Pancake stays out. Detail goes for his second Joker, and he cleanly comes out in third. Slaunch takes his second Joker and comes out behind Fireball by a good margin, likely going to finish fifth. Lap 10, Pancake takes his first Joker, waiting all the way to the end to start using his. Luke takes his second behind him. Lap 11, final lap. Pancake is now the last one to take his Joker. He must go through it one more time this lap. He goes in, and Luke comes out safely in first. But Detail and Pancake are fairly close in the exit, but Pancake makes it ahead. If Detail had a few slightly better laps, he maybe could have pulled off a block pass there. Luke will come across the line in first, Pancake second, Detail third, Fireball fourth, and Slaunch rounding out the top five. With that race, Luke would now have a five-point gap on Pancake, meaning that for Pancake to win the championship, he would have to win the race and have Luke finish finish in sixth or lower. That's the setup for Moto2. Let's get to it. One more race to close out an era. The lineup, Opix, Armada, Soul, and Roman on the front row, Hunter, Slaunch, Fireball, and Detail on the second, and then on the third row are two championship contenders, Pancake and Luke. The gate drops and away we go for the last moto ever on Halo 5. Soul and Armada lead the field after the first turn. A massive pile up in the downhill turn two, and another wreck going into the sand cave. Roman goes down, Hunter goes down in the cave as well. Soul still leads them down, somehow surviving the carnage thus far. Soul leads his first lap. Lap 2, Pancake is currently behind Roman and Luke, but he makes an unfortunate error in the first turn that costs him some time. Meanwhile, Luke makes the pass on Roman. Armada, Roman, Pancake, and Hunter all take Jokers. Pancake unfortunately hits Roman on his Joker, and that allows Hunter to slip on by him in the Joker lane. Lap 3, Sol still hangs on to the lead. Luke starts to challenge Slaunch for third place, and Detail is trying his hardest to get by Sol. Surprisingly, Sol takes his Joker here, and that allows Detail, Slaunch, and Luke to become the top three. They were three of the four that duked it out in the first race here six years ago. Could they be the top three in the last race here now? Lap four, more bad luck for Pancake as he strikes an unfortunate gopher in turn one that I honestly don't recall seeing anyone else hit in any other race on this track. After that, he decides to go for his second joker. Lap five, Detail still leads. Luke second and Slaunch third. Roman is in fourth and Fireball has fifth place. Pancake currently eighth, but with both jokers down, trying to run heaters and waiting for other people's jokers to come in to hopefully give him some more positions. Lap 6, still no jokers taken for the top 3, 4th and 5th have taken 1, and I believe everyone else behind has taken both. Lap 7, Slaunch goes for his first joker and biffs it a bit, but he still has just enough speed to pull out in front of Fireball. Roman takes his second joker and loses a couple positions. Pancake moves up to 5th. Lap 8, Luke takes his first joker. Fireball has enough of Slaunch's bumper, and he decides to go for his second, and he comes out just in front of Pancake by about 2 goose lengths. Lap 9, a big lap for Slaunch. If he doesn't take his joker here, he may lose more 
multiple positions. Detail finally decides to go in for his first Joker, and Luke takes the lead. Luke currently has the lead with both drivers having one Joker used, and with two laps to go, how did Detail and Luke decide to play these last two laps with both of them still needing to take one Joker? Meanwhile, Slaunch does take his second Joker, and he comes out behind Fireball, but just in front of Pancake. Soul and Roman have a great battle to the line as well. Lap 10, Detail has a big run on Luke going into the cave, but Detail decides to mix it up and take the alternate line here. They come out of the cave side by side, perfectly equal, and having the worst line into the sling, Detail decides to go for his Joker. Pancake gets by Slaunch, but he hits a two-wheel in the sling, which brings Slaunch back into the fight. Lap 11, final lap of this race, and Halo 5. It's gonna come down to the Joker run for Luke. Him and Detail should be very close when exiting it. We exit the cave, and we approach the sling. Luke goes in for his final Joker, and he exits side by side with Detail up the hill, and Luke fires around the outside. Detail tries to go for a crossover to keep it alive, but it's not enough. In a poetic way, the last race here ends similarly to the first. Luke taking the lead late from Detail, and they finish first and second, just like they did in the past. Fireball ends up taking the final podium spot in third, Pancake takes fourth, and Slaunch will finish out in the top five at fifth. The final points, Luke with 244, Pancake 235, Detail 223, and Fireball 217. And we'll also give a shout out to Slaunch in fifth with 172. It was a gladiatorial battle for the last season and race at Mirabilis for the championship. Exactly how it should end after Halo 5 has put on that type of show for us ever since we started racing it in early 2016. Now that our journey is at its end, you've heard enough from me. Let's hear from you. All right, the Mirabilis stuff. What was my favorite Mir Mirabilis race? Uh... <laughs> that probably has to be the the Season 5 uh, Mirabilis race we did. It was a battle every lap, every turn. The battle basically raged on from the start to the end. That race where <laughs> Roman crashed into the bowl. Season 5. Just such a crazy race to be a part of. I, I think top three, without a doubt. Favorite moment in a Mirabilis race? And I remember I got a pretty good start, so I was trying to hold off the pack as everybody was kind of coming in, and then we kind of just boomeranged back and forth a little bit. I don't think there's one specific moment in the whole race. It was all really fun. Triple pass on the, the hairpin. That moment is like the epitome of the battle. Like when I think of that race, that's like the moment. I'll just go with the Roman choke job. Season five. My favorite version of Mirabilis. I'm not sure I could pick a favorite version of Mirabilis. Definitely the Rally Cross version. I'm a big advocate for Jokers. Season five. I'm a sucker for the GP version. The original version we ran, the way the track flowed was really cool. I really loved the, f the first iteration. It, it's tough not to choose the first one, but honestly, the Rally Cross version ended up being so fun. Every single version of it, no matter what we did to it, it was still fantastic. What made Mirabilis so great? Every time we raced it, more or less, there was something different about it, whether it was a very slight change or a really big and noticeable change. The fact it was always the season finale. Because it had a lot of versatility, uh, especially when you incorporate it in the rally cross. The corners were great for passing. It seemed like you could make a pass in damn near every section of the track if you wanted to. Every, like every turn, every lap, it was a battle. There were so many elements on that track, so many difficult sections. Season 5. If we bring back Mirabilis and Infinite, what would you like to see changed, experimented with, or added to the track? Many other things that are massive would increase. I would wonder, with the extra budget, whether it'd be kind of cool if we could have like multiple tracks or multiple versions of the track on one map. The tower that was at the start finish line. So you could do a lot with aesthetic. Try to add the Joker section again. Add a pit section. Uh, more whoops or to Jared. All right, how did you find out about the HRL? Either late 2016, early 2017, I got a message from Standby Luke 7. Luch during middle school. I believe it was Edward or Luke, one of those guys, told me about HRL. Through Luke. I don't remember because I'm getting old and it, it feels like it was forever ago now, but I'm pretty sure it was Blades or, or Luke. 
I uh, think you knew me from ORL days, so you just hit me up, asked me if I want to race again sometime, and I said sure. Custom Games browser, and saw some guy racing on the track a la Vulcan GP by himself. Luke messaged a lot of old racing guys, and he came to me. From a Reddit post that Luke posted on the Halo subreddit. Oh, I managed to find my way into a custom game. Luke and some other people were doing some racing. I kind of just uh, joined in and did every race I could for the most part. Just through ORL. Then the guy said he was in a racing league and invited me to the Discord. His gamer tag, if I remember correctly, was Obixonic. What does HRL mean to me? Feeling like I'm a part of a really tight knit community. I met some really good friends of mine. Bunch of conquers. For me, it's kind of just like the place that I call home when it comes to Halo racing. It's always just kind of been a place for the homies. Come hang out, race, have a good time. Definitely hold some of my fondest gaming memories. The biggest two things that come to mind are friendship and the competition. It's just a way of feeling like you're a racer, like the guys you're watching on the TV or watching on YouTube. HRL is an outlet for for forging creativity, funny moments with friends, and good competition. Ronnie rambunctious lads. No, I'm just kidding. It's pretty cool seeing a track come to life after imagining it, forging it, and having a memorable race on it. It's a good escape to be together with everybody like at the end of the week. HR was more of a fun vibe place to race for me. Just a place where I can send people into the corner and have no regrets. What's my favorite HRL memory? Uh, my memory's dog shit, so I'm gonna take the cop out and go with the 1-1 one -one at Eagle River. <laughs> when I think of HRL memories, as bad as it sounds, Season 5 is just peak. I think it was at Amsoil Arena Cross. The Season 14 race on Volition. My first ever win on Bava. Winning Moto2 of the Season 5 Mirabilis race. Every collision zone was a cheek clencher. It was one of the early Rellington races when it was just like crossover city. Last lap in that race and I was in second, uh, Luke was in first. Definitely the Justin Baker W. Uh, that one stands out with such a great moment. Definitely going 1-1 at uh, Carpentaria. The last turn going into the finish line, I went in for a block pass. Mine launches GP season from years ago. I think I beat him by a point or he beat me by a point. And I actually made it work except I took him out in the process, so it was totally worth it in the end. My favorite all-time HRL track is Eagle River on Halo 5. Chili Bowl, Halo 4. I remember it like it was yesterday. Good fucking track, recently my favorite track in HRL history. Also Carpentaria, yeah, I just had fun with that track. I spent a lot of time on it, and once you learn it, I feel like it flows really nicely. Low-key, Wild Goose. That track was wild, good SX track. The wall tap was kinda cool. I dig it. My favorite HRO track, genuinely, uh, London Arena Cross. The first time we raced this track, I fell in love with it. I feel like it was such a cheese fest. I actually put Outlands at number one over Mirabilis, uh, just because I think the quality is of the track is like the KO5, but I, I guess my favorite would be Mirabilla. Probably Portland Classic. Salt Lake City, I think just because of all the battles that went down there. Temple of Atlas. Troll! First one for sure, again, has to be Barbo. Mirabilis. Honestly, anything that I won. Where would I like to see HRO go from here? Just need more people racing. I would love to see it get bigger. I'd love to see more people get involved and try racing. I would just love to see it become bigger and better. I want to see more people come in and be a part of this tight-knit community. More people showing up, divisions and multiple group nights and, and stuff like that throughout the week or the weekend. I don't mind the the race-specific series, but I am old school. I am a sucker for the original season format. I'd say definitely a rally cross season. Pits again for GPs. I'm a pretty big advocate. I kind of want it to remain kind of close-knit. I'd like to see HRL keep going in the same direction it is. Ideally, Halo Infinite's Mongoose connection will get to the point where we can have competitive battles. We can come up with a lot of seasons that people really have a lot of fun in. Like, I'm very happy with where we're at, I think. I hope HRL, you know, sticks around. As long as it keeps going, I think that's all that matters. And so, we kept going. World of Outlaws Season 4 concluded alongside the ending of Season 14. After that, we ran a new driver specialty series in the summer alongside TRS Season 6. And in the fall, we gave Firestone Firehawk another go with a twist. Warthog races added in, and a reach throwback. 2022 ended with our reach throwback grand final. But where do we go from there? Is this where we call it a decade, hang it up and move on? 
truthfully, it'd be a fitting way to cap off our run. We started with a Reach main series back in the second half of 2012, and we'd end with one in 2022. We even raced many of those same tracks in our Reach throwback. If it was our final chapter, there are definitely worse ways we could have crossed the finish line. After all, we've done over 40 seasons in that time. Yes, even with all the hiatuses, over 40 seasons, and closing in on a thousand races. Sure, there's always more that you could do, but to be fair, we've done quite a lot. We spanned the life cycles of four different Halo games, one of them being a game that most in the community didn't want to touch. And that game, Halo 5, held the majority of our events. We ran seasons there for six years. We've covered the races with videos ever since our start. Sure, not every race was covered, but the majority were. Over a decade's worth of video covering our journey. If we ever wanted to relive any of it, we easily could with those. Twenty twenty two would end the chapter of a decade of racing from the HRL. But with one chapter's end, another begins. The dawn was on the horizon. Halo Infinite. It may not be a perfect game, but neither was Halo 5. And we made that work. Time and time again, when most doubted it and didn't want to touch it, we flourished on it. And as for HRL, it started as a dream from a boy that wanted to combine two of his greatest passions, racing and gaming. A racing league on Halo where anyone could make any track they wanted and throw down some laps on it with friends. But through the years, HRL became more than just a racing league. HRL is a place to flex your creativity with Forge. HRL is a place to hang out with the boys and enjoy a weekend. HRL is a place that we can all call home. Together, we made HRL. And together, we rise.